What is up? And welcome back to the Sweat It Out podcast. Today we have a very special guest in the studio. It's been a while since we've done one of these, huh, Mendez? I was about to say, we got to take some time to just appreciate the fact that we have somebody in our studio. Oh, man, it feels so good. These are the best ones, by the way. Oh, they are. But like I was saying, we have a very special guest in the studio. He's a man that makes Mendez and I look so great in all of our photos. One of, if not the best, in my opinion, photographers here in Miami. Also, probably the only guy that I know that gets recognized solely by his calves. <laughs> we want you guys to help us welcome Matt Roy. What's going on, Matt? How are you? What's going on, guys? How's it thanks going, for having dude? me. Yeah, Appreciate thanks for coming in. How thanks for wearing pants so we don't I get up. I don't want to embarrass you. I was about to say, how are you and the calves doing? <laughs> they're good. They're good. You know, they're, uh, they're covered up right now. Just trying to keep my presence low key. Did anybody notice you walking into the building or no? I got a few stairs. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. I mean, they're extra baggy jeans, but they're still kind of tight around my. Those, those, those look like like the old school Wranglers. You got like the gold stitch in them. You're ready to go. Yeah, some just Levi's. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did wait. I know we spoke this uh, before we jumped on, but we did talk about the uh, Just Cavs socks line that we're going to open up, right? I think. Well, I think you fucking ruined it now, man. <laughs> 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 I'm just curious, like, who's going to photograph it if it's my calves? We can just set the timer, right? So you can, that's still, right. That you works. can still shoot it. You can do the settings. I think we can press well, the credit button. for that's calves it. and photo. Yeah. Josh does want Double credit dip. for at least clicking the Yeah, button. you can at least tag me as a photographer. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll take the credit. I know Josh wants the credit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny how people I mean, get mad it. about that. I like, you take a photo with your iPhone, like, bro, you didn't give me credit. Yes. <laughs> Especially on social media, they're so. like, "Why didn't you tag me? I took your photo." <laughs> okay, yeah. Cool. Are you talking about anyone in particular that we should know? But she doesn't listen to the podcast anyway, so we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no names mentioned. Right. Uh, so, what's going on, man? How you been lately? Good. I've been busy. Thankfully, I mean, yeah, with everything going on, people still need content. Thank God. Uh, it's definitely been uh, an interesting journey over the last eight months, but we're making it work. To be safe. I think you said it, man. You know, everybody needs content. You know, we're in the world of content. And I think now more than ever with the uh, expansion of online and social media, I think not just content, yeah. you need more content, you know. And, yep, 100%. And you, and you need better content. You need better content, too. Yep. You know, higher higher quality content. No, so, 100%, 100%. So how's that How's that been for you? How's How's been the influx of people coming in? And did you feel, did you think that this was going to happen or did you actually think at the beginning you were going to get? Um, I, think, I think it kind of, I mean, at first it was a little scary because I think everyone was so up in the air, like what's actually going to happen. And I mean, I think a lot of us actually was like, I'm going to just take a two week break and we're going to get right back to the way it was, you know, two months later, like, oh, maybe, maybe not. But no, I was, it was crazy because I was getting hit up in the beginning, like, hey, you know, you think you'd want to, are you still shooting? Are you still like, can we do this with just one person, like one model? I mean, I had one, one big, big job that saved me during, like when it, things started getting like, oh, money's starting to kind of dwindle down a little bit. And I did a job that probably should have had eight people with me and did it all by myself. Crazy. Um, yeah, it, but it, it, we made it work. Uh, and I think that's what people are realizing right now. You, you, can, you can still make stuff work. You, mm -hmm. Now I'm wearing five hats instead of one or two. Well, I think now, too, like I think people are realizing, too, in businesses that you really don't need a whole crazy amount of stuff no. or infrastructure. Or people like you can get shit done with a small group of people or with a small infrastructure. Oh, I, I get stuff done. I mean, 99 percent of the time it's me and my camera. There's no makeup. There's no assistant. There's, you know. Unless it's, it's us, and then we need all the help. Then we need a lot of makeup. We need a lot of makeup. Well, I don't know if anymore. Like, I don't have the beard anymore. I know. How you crazy. Know, my how, hair. How different. So, he so came in. Little less like, maintenance. Oh, he came yeah, in. Right. I was like, bro, you look 10 years younger. <laughs> I was like, you need to put that beard back on now. <laughs> Glue it on. <laughs> Glue it on. Yeah, it's cooling off. You might need to grow it back out. Yeah, it's almost I know. winter. Uh, you know, somebody told me it was like, eh, it's about that time. I'm already in sweatpants and sweatshirts. Yeah, I, I got pants on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just started wearing pants this Don't week. Don't the calves keep you warm though? No, well, the hair. The blood. To, but I shave my legs now, so that's yeah. It's a little. He's cool a, he's a professional cyclist now, so he's big time. I actually, just retired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I realized how much hard work it really takes to be good at it, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I missed my missed my opportunity. It's all good. So. You know, how, how was the, you know, transition in the p 
pandemic for you? I know you just kind of touched upon it, but you know, were there any, you know, big struggles that you kind of had to work through? If so, like, how did you work through them to, you know, make sure that you could sustain the business that you needed? I mean, I don't think there was any big struggles. It was more, had to be a little tighter with finances and just being a little cautious of, you know, what you're doing with your money. Um, and I, I don't think a lot of, I mean, we might touch on this, I don't know, but I don't think a lot of people knew that I was actually still doing personal training up until this happened. I mean, I had two clients. It kind of, it flip flop like where the photography used to be the hobby that turned into my full-time career. And then the training turned into a hobby from the career. Um, so letting that go was kind of like that last, like, all right, I'm done with like, and then three months, four months into it. And I was like, Oh, I don't have that source of revenue coming in, but it allows me more time to focus on the photography. Um, and like we said, like the, the content had, like people were still, like my clients that I work with a lot, still putting out, new clothes, new gear, new supplements like that have to be photographed. And so luckily no, I was able to keep working on a, it's probably a smaller scale. Um, but I'd say after a couple months, things started to like kind of pick back up and now it's, I wouldn't say it's full. It's, it's pretty much full swing right now. Um, you know, jobs are a little bit different with as far as mass social distancing, getting tested for everything and kicking me out of the, um, me out of the track. Oh yeah. Sorry. We did take over the whole entire yeah, he's today. like, sorry, man. I know, uh, I know you got some business around, but get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> People were not happy with us. Oh, I can imagine. I was like, all right, man, whatever. Take my picture before People you leave. Were, so we we locked all the gates so people could not get in. And yet there were still people coming in Jeez. and the police officer was like, ah, there's holes in the fences. He's on the loudspeaker yelling at people, get off the track. You know, I'm one I mean, of those people had, going through the we, holes we, in I the mean, fence. <laughs> we had a golf cart running around on the track chasing our runners. So it's awesome. it not safe to have other people out there and, and it would ruin our shots. So sorry about that. Yeah. So fuck me. <laughs> you could go train. You could go train them in another yeah. part of the park. I feel bad for the people actually using the track. To, yeah, and to run. Know, run like, nah, sorry, we're, we're important. So, so Matt, how how did it feel being able to transition fully into your now your hobby being your career? How did that feel oh, for you? Man, it, it feels amazing. I mean. People, it's so funny. It's like, this didn't happen overnight. Like someone asked me the other day, I was shooting an event this weekend. Like, oh man, how long have you been doing this? And I was like, 12 years, you know? So, and I, I did it for a while just for fun. And mm -hmm. because of my training schedule, I'd, you know, I'd see clients from six to noon. I'd shoot photos all afternoon. I'd go back in and see clients at night. And over time it just, you know, if I lost a client, I wouldn't try to replace them. And like, okay, that gives me opportunity to, do more photography work. And then I got to the point where I was, okay, I'm only training clients Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And so I can shoot Tuesday, Thursday, weekends. And then that cut down to like, okay, I'm only doing mornings. And that cut down to like, I'm down to two people. I mean, but that was like a solid five year pro like took like a good five years of to make that transition. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So really you never took on clients. It was just let your clients. I just let them hey, slowly. Well, kudos, you, you kept a lot of clients for a pretty good amount of time. You know, if this is a, your, your final ride yeah. with them was recently. Yeah. Well, I, I would work jobs around my schedule. Um, the two clients that I had at the end just kind of fit really well into my schedule. And they they knew the deal. Like if I got called for a, you know, if I got a call for a full day job or if I had to travel, like they they knew that that took precedence now. 100%. Um, and they were cool with it. If they weren't cool with it, I would, I would have found them somebody else to work with and just kind of out of respect. Yeah. And uh, I know one of them had multiple other trainers and had a gym to go to. So I didn't feel like if I missed a, uh, missed a night, I know he was taken care of. So I think a lot of times, and I think what's really cool about this is that you see a lot of people that they get stuck in one thing and they're scared to turn their hobby into a passion of work. Um, so the fact that you were able to do that was truly amazing, even though, yeah, it might take in, you know, you said 12 years, but you did it. Yeah. You know, and then for me, this was one, and I'm bringing this up because you know, it wasn't until, you know, maybe I think it was like a little bit before COVID when I had literally stopped finishing my last training client. And it was when I moved more into the business coaching, mm -hmm. uh, took on with Josh the podcast. And it was really more about the, and it's not that, don't get me wrong, I love the training. I love being a trainer Same. for 10 plus yeah. years. But it's just, I knew there was another side that I really wanted to put my focus and attention on. And I really knew that I, wa I wanted more mm -hmm. out of what I was doing. And it, it, it does feel like this relief. It feels like, man, like, this feels good. Yeah. Like, I was able to do this, and I was able to not, 
also not only do this, but turn something that was taking care of me out and then turn something else into now what's taking care of me, my business, my family. Yeah. So the fact that you can do that, I think is so cool. And I think, uh, I, I think definitely it's an inspiration for a lot of people. It, it definitely took a little bit longer than I think people think that because I didn't really want to let go of the training. Like I, I, lo- I, I, I think I'm extremely fortunate that I had, I have two careers that like, I don't mind getting up at four o'clock in the morning to go see clients, to go do a photo shoot. Like that's, that's amazing. Um, but I, I also put a lot of time and effort and work into it. Um, definitely wasn't easy. I mean, when I was doing, I was basically doing full-time training and full-time photography wow. and you know, then editing till 12 o'clock, one o'clock, wake up, start editing, go see clients, do it all over again. Um, it definitely was exhausting, but I, and, you know, like I enjoyed it. And so that, that definitely helped. Well, I think it brings up two good points too, right? It's like one, you, you always hear people. I mean, we had, you know, a guest on the podcast, uh, on our last episode, you know, who kind of took a different road. It was just like, all right, I dropped everything and I moved into that. You know, you kind of, what's lack of a better term, like kind of molded it together and then, and then made that shift over time. And I think like people have to realize that, you know, there are a lot of different ways that you can make these transitions in your life. 100%. Some some people will be a lot better at, you know, just that cold stop, right? It's like people who stop smoking cigarettes. Some people need to wean off of them. Some people need to, you know, just cut cold turkey and, and they can handle that, right? So it really depends on on what works best for you. And, you know, like you said, if you still like what you do, you can do it. You know, I still train people in person a little bit. I'm, you know, heading in that direction that you and Anthony uh, went down where I'm, I'm weaning people off and I'm not taking on new clients. I'm just trying to pick up people online and, and work on the podcast a lot more. So um, I feel blessed to be able to do that, but you know, it's not one size fits all for everyone, you 100%. know? And I still, ha- uh, I, at the time I was, you know, I have, well, she's 10 now, but I have a daughter, I had a wife. So those family bills, like I would have loved to have just said, okay, cool. Let's just boom, cut it off. And we're going to follow this passion. Um, I probably could have made that work if I wanted to go that route. I just, chose not to but i had a good i had a buddy man it must have been four to five years ago who made me like put in like we were doing some like a, a vision and goals and this was my buddy robbie from lululemon and uh and he was just like all right you need to declare i am going to be a photographer and i was like i, I can't do that like i can't declare and put <laughs> it out there in the world and the, am i gonna offend my clients and now i'm leaving that and so we, we put it out there and it, it still took like another couple of years before it was like it is what it is now um but definitely had some friends that that pushed me and helped me along the way which you know it's great well, well i think a lot of people can say that they're uh definitely happy to know that you're a full-time photographer for all the we amazing are. Well, pictures <laughs> and campaigns and marketing you've done for them and yeah like josh said we are and it's funny because i don't i think a good majority of the people have no idea that i did personal training before this it's crazy and uh but that's that's what made this that's what makes the fitness photography. I'm not gonna say it's easy for me, for sure. But I, I understand yeah. it. I can coach it. I can guide you through it. If it's someone who's not familiar, or if it's a model, we the can we, we can make it look. I'm a stickler on form when it comes to that. So in my photos, it, it has to look right too. Like um, and I think that also that helps separate me from a lot of the other people that might not know those things. Well, I think that that's a huge benefit, right? Because you do know. Because there's a there's a difference between taking, you know, still like, you know, portrait photos or fashion or like, you know, when people are moving from point A to point B, like knowing and anticipating where they're going to be anticipation. Right. And a lot of the times like we're looking for so such a specific angle. Right. Like I want I want people to see how I would be like cueing the person Mm -hmm. essentially. Right. As I'm moving, as you're taking the photo. So it's great that, you know we can have you there as like a reference or someone we can go to. Like, I mean, you and I all the time, even especially towards the end of shoots when like we, we start getting super tired, right? You're always there with like five, 10 ideas. Well, why don't we try this? Why don't we bring this into to play and look at it? So it's, it's great. And it really helps us out because it takes kind of some of that pressure off of us. hundred percent. So I want to ask you, what was the hardest thing that you faced going into your, photography career what was the thing that you would say was probably the the make or break for you to be able to go all in to go all in i think i would say i guess the one word would be like i struggled a little bit with confidence 
Um, I did the same thing with when I was training. I'm like, I, I couldn't know enough. I couldn't study enough. I couldn't get enough. Like, so confidence in the ability that I can deliver every single time. Um, that, but it, that took years. And I still, to this day, get, you know, get nervous before it. Not as bad as I used to, but I also think that kind of kept me sharp. Um, as far as the nerves, like knowing that, like, I got to show up with my A game versus like showing up like, I got this. This is easy. The day that I do that, I'm, I'm in trouble. Like that scares me. Unless it's Josh. Unless it's Josh's pictures. <laughs> then I, I mean, I make everything easy. <laughs> you know, like everything is just graceful. There's never any problems, you know, just even kill. Just even kill all day long. I think that might be the weed. But, but I, would say, <laughs> I think that that took the longest for me. Um, the confidence in my abilities to, to deliver consistently. Because I see people like, oh, it's an amazing photo. Cool. Replicate that every time you go out. Or improve, get be better than the so perfect example. All right, we want to shoot in South Point Park. Shot there a hundred times. <laughs> like, how do I go there for the hundred and one hundred first time? Do something different, make it look better than everything yep. I've done there before. That, that's like, the challenge. That's the challenge. And you got like we've. Wow. I mean, we have more than you know a couple of cool locations, but th those seem to be like those same spots that everyone wants to shoot at. Um, so well, I don't I know if that technically answers the question. Well, I definitely got to say that. <laughs> Living in Miami is a is a is a diamond plus. Um, that doesn't hurt if you want palm hurt. trees and blue skies. Yeah. And it w recently, and, we and have quality a parking garages. Oh, if you yeah, mean, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I'll take a parking garage any day because that's it. It doesn't. Um, the parking garage is a neutral palette, a neutral place that it could be anywhere. Um, you know, we were at the day that we kicked you out of the park. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to South Point the following day, and the client was like, "We don't want palm trees in our video." <laughs> in <with> South photos. Point, <laughs> and we we're like, "Whoa!" Oh, so therein lies like, "Oh, can you make it look like New York?" Like we have like two city blocks of downtown that kind of have that vibe. Similar, mm -hmm. but yeah. But not much. Like if, you City don't want, if you don't want, yeah, you don't want yeah. blue skies and palm trees. It's you know, you yeah. There's a rock. little old, there's a little older part of downtown that looks some, yeah. that had the brick mm -hmm. building. Exactly. By Olympia, yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. That's a, that's the mm -hmm. spot. Yep. yep, that's like a two block yeah. little radius right there. It's so funny. It's it's every time I drive by there with the little shops and stuff, it does remind me of New York. Yep. The Olympia Theater. Yeah, just a the, fucking the giant rip off all those stories. <laughs> <laughs> Never just purchased cheap, anything down cheap there. Cheap ten dollar t shirts and. Fucking sunglasses. Well, that's kind of how I feel like South Beach is a little. Josh, is that where yeah, you got no. that shirt or no? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Stussy, dude. Come on. <laughs> cool. We're twelve. On, this is again. fashion, bro. That's, that's a hundred. Coming around, shirt, it's like Vonda. Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. I'm about. I'm about to invest in those trucker hats. Like, I swear, no. got every t-shirt you're gonna make in a here comeback. Is at least over a hundred dollars that Josh is wearing. I'm telling you, this is Old Navy. Five bucks. All right, don't I'll, shit on me, Mister. I'll, th I'll throw it away next week, <laughs> Mister. Salvation <laughs> Army over here. Salvation <laughs> Army. Look at this guy. <laughs> NBA jam. Let's go. It's a throwback, <laughs> bro. Guaranteed, he got that shirt for free from the Heat. Guaranteed. <laughs> guaranteed, <laughs> guaranteed. I don't even know. It just came in the a, mail. He got an, an influencer <laughs> gift bag. <laughs> That's not Puma. I just yeah. You know, <laughs> every time I need like some, wait, wait, I got some Puma right I know, here. I hold up, hold up. <laughs> Anytime I need socks or something, I'm like, yeah, let me go to your car real quick. I just no, go, go open up the truck. Open like, my shoes, like, bro. I'm gonna take like five <laughs> of these socks. I'm not gonna even ask. I'm just gonna take them. Yo, they're the best. Who you won't you even them? notice they're gone. <laughs> yeah, no, they're problem. giveaways. <laughs> <laughs> going to like someone in need. Give away this week. <laughs> going to someone in need. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, oh, influencing. So. What do you think, you know, like what set, cause I really do think that you've really separated yourself from the majority of the, I mean, there's like a, a handful of you guys and you work yeah. with a lot of people, um, you know, that I think are on the, the level that you're at, but what really separates you from the rest of the pack? Cause there is a, I mean, so many people wouldn't be reaching out to you to try to work with you if it weren't, What's the, you know, for, for I, that X factor. It's the advertising of the calves. the calves. Yeah. yeah. Come on. It's the calves. Just so they can get behind the scenes photos. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it goes back to what we talked about before. Like my background in the fitness realm, being able to coach, being able to like, you know, and they show up like, we don't know what we're going to do. I'm like, well, let's try X, Y, and Z exercise. Oh, I know this looks good for this. Does that, does that happen often where people just oh, don't come all, prepared? All, all I feel I feel like if I don't have like 150 extra shots to shoot, I'm like, uh, Matt's going <laughs> to no, hate me. No, no. That happens 90% of the time. And do you see that also with like legit companies where they'll come in and 
And I'm not saying obviously have some level of plan. Mm-hmm. Where have you seen any like where you're like, man, I have to actually put in some direction in here. Uh, that that happens frequently, or they're looking for, like they they know my work or my body of work, so they're like kind of like let me have a little bit of control when it comes to the the movement side of things and what they want to photograph. Um, they just don't let you drive the golf cart. No, <laughs> I actually thought I was going to drive the golf cart that day, um, but I, I it was didn't. a diesel ass golf yeah, cart. I'm not gonna lie. Thing cruised. No, I, I Corey was on video. I got to shoot stills when we had an assistant drive. Uh, but I was looking forward. To, I thought I was actually going to drive. Once again, here we talk about like a limited amount of people on set. We didn't have an assistant, so I, you know, actually no. Our sorry, I take that back. Our sound guy, our sound guy drove because we couldn't grab sound over the noise of the Mendez. You would have loved this. I, I volunteered myself to be the model until they told me I'd have to run around the track, and I was like, Nah, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I'm so, good. You'll never so, get this guy to run. Jacqueline mm-hmm. ran. I think she had it logged over 12 miles that day that we had. Her I'd run. kill you. <laughs> Jeez, I just would be pissed. And I'd be so like, mad. They were like 300 meter sprint, like 400. Over, repeat, not over. Not I'd be like, listen, let's just. I'm gonna run ten feet. You just put that on loop. Yeah. All right, we're gonna we're gonna roll with that. The only place Josh is running is home, so he doesn't have to <laughs> yeah. keep running. <laughs> Josh, where are you? No, are you I ran five miles home, and that's it. You seen that beastie scooter? I'm not running anywhere anymore. <laughs> like the the bike days and the, the skateboard days are I over. Think about getting a scooter, and then I'm like, I, I take enough chances riding the oh, bicycle. Bro, I've around. almost been wrecked so oh. many times. Cody got wrecked. I know so many people on the scooter. I'm just like, nah. My ex-girlfriend hit someone on the scooter one time. That was horrific. Was it you? No, (laughs) sometimes I wish. She tried to run him over. Maybe. (laughs) Probably. Maybe. (laughs) Wouldn't be the first. I'm definitely not getting a scooter. No, I'd kill myself. You on a scooter, bro? I'm not getting one. We'll let you take mine out if you want. But going back to that previous question, I I, I do get a lot of, oh, just do what you do. And I'm like, I know what I like. But is that what <laughs> like? So and what so do you do? I, I don't, <laughs> I, I, I'd rather have, like, I like it when I have a shot list and when I have a mood board and direction, um, because then I know what the client's looking for. Like, yep. like I just said, like, I know what I like and what could be really cool. But if that's not what they're yep. looking for or the color palette or whatever it is, like the mood is just off. That doesn't work. So, so, guys, before you book Matt, like, please make sure you have your shot just, list. You have <laughs> just, just like, a little. Well, that's, <laughs> well, what like, would what would be some good things for you know, like, let's say there are trainers or there, you know, there are businesses out there that that want to take on your service. What's a way that, or, or even photographers who are getting into photography and they don't know what to you know ask yeah. for. Well, I I was just gonna say communication number one between you and your subject or client or whoever it is. So you know, say like stuff with you guys, like you do, you know. We're promoting personal training or fitness and health in general, whatnot. Like it helps if you come like I have these 10 ideas I'd like to cap or these 10 movements I'd like to capture. And maybe it's I'm doing an article on, you know, when you were doing your mace stuff. Like, okay, that makes sense. Let's work on the mace. I might know I mean, I know enough that I can guide you through it. But if you come in with like, I need to do these 10 exercises, and then through that, I'm like, oh, that doesn't look good. It covers your face. I can't see you. So like, yeah. you know, being able to adjust on the fly. Um, and then adding things to it, but at least having a place to start, um, because there are times when I like, oh, let's, you just, you know, let's just go somewhere cool and, uh, just shoot what you sh- want to shoot. I'm like, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I do like that freedom sometimes if they're willing to experiment. Cool. Um, but it's much easier if you come to me with, with a, with an, I- at least an idea and a plan. Of course, not having that structure in order to just. Just make it much easier yeah. on both ends. Especially and then, if you're paying for my time. Let's make this efficient. Yeah, you know? yeah, 100%. I mean, granted, you want to walk around and pay me all day? I'm for hire. No, I know. Jo- Josh Josh told me he was. That's a goal of mine, dead ass. <laughs> yeah. That's a goal of mine. Just have someone come around and take photos and video me all day. All just day. Gary V. Just Gary oh, V. Style, so, right? That no, sounds so horrible. <laughs> he's like, well, he's like oh, I would get. I mean, I'll, I'll photograph it, but as far as like being the human. Guys, I'm not, I mean, I would get canceled in a heart. The shit that comes out of my mouth, I would get canceled in a heart. People would be like, one, you're boring as fuck. You're a lot more boring than you make it seem. And two. Yeah, like I can be you know, cool for 30 minutes. That's yeah. Like max. Yeah. <laughs> oh man i don't know but i've told this voice like people can listen to this all day i think I you should start can. a podcast dead ass yeah, you should right. you guys are out i'm in peace yeah all right bye <laughs> i'll take over for should Josh. be called should be called hold my camera <laughs> <laughs> i like that. hold that's my camera podcast. That in my notes that's it write quick. it down right now Woo! 
No, but Let's I mean, on, honestly, though, I think a ton of people would get a lot of benefit out of something like that. Yeah. You know, like. I, I think I would get a lot of benefit out of it because until you actually, I think you actually put stuff down, like, and it, you, these questions, I'm like, oh man, am I going to be able to answer these? Like, it's going to be hard. Nah. And then, but it, it makes you think about like, what's your process? Like, how does this work? I'm like, oh, I could be better at, you know what? Oh, the communication. Like, maybe it's my fault for not reaching out and saying like, hey, this is what yeah. I need from you. Hmm. Um, instead of just like yeah. thinking that they know. Um, for sure. So that's, you know. Well, yeah. I know Josh is definitely a, uh, He's a pretty structured, organized guy. He always has his uh, things locked in place of what he wants to do. He showed me his OnlyFans uh, pictures <laughs> that he wants to take with you. He told me. Yeah, that. I actually meant to talk to you. We need to set up a <laughs> shoot for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually told that I should probably start an OnlyFans for my cast. For your cast? Yo, do you need a manager then, to, to run then, the account? But then they're like, everyone's going to know it's you. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Only calves. Only calves. <laughs> I'll curate it. Yeah. Listen, I think I got the clientele to subscribe to your page. Oh, we yeah. call it we call it hands on calves. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, just you like you like rubbing plants and shit up against <laughs> the back of your calves, like, <laughs> kicking that kicking your shins in water, just making splashes. Splashes, yeah. splashes my feet in the water. Did you calf me? People actually <laughs> pay, people pay for this though. Listen, I there's people all do pay for this. Yeah, you, know, you know what's hilarious though? when 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 girls are on OnlyFans and they're like, oh, you know, this is just a way so that you know my fans can. Uh, you know, my audience can connect with me more. I'm like, they don't connect with you enough on Instagram. No. Like, they can't just DM you on there. What's a real What's a real reason? Money, money. Yeah, yeah. I have no problem with that. No, I don't have a problem. If everyone, it's a win win situation. I'm not like, gonna lie. When, know, when the pandemic started, I had a lot of my gay clients were like, you know, you should fucking start an OnlyFans. I'm like, I don't think I can. <laughs> that's not what they were. I don't thinking. think I can cook. Well, I know what they're really thinking, but that's never gonna Wait, happen. Or what that's is the, it? That's the next step after OnlyFans. You get too much <laughs> feet DMs already. Oh, oh my! No, that's actually a running joke with my friends. What? Like, oh man, <laughs> this it, guy. You I don't get any, bro. Of if you looked at my DMs, like, I mean, at least. At least five people every every week, just like so. Oh, well, especially when I used to train barefoot. Like, oh. oh, you train barefoot? Like, how is that? Oh, it's fine. Like, oh, but like, it's not rough on your feet. Do you get massages? Like, if you get massages, like, what type of lotion do you, do you, do you like? <laughs> lotion? I'm like, all right. But now my fr now all my friends from from college are like always DMing me, being like, oh Yo, bro, God. show me your feet. I made ten dollars. I'll. I'll I mean Oh my I've, God. I've literally had I've Dream. literally had dudes ask me be like yo I'll give you fifty bucks if you send me a video of your like you rubbing your feet I'm like no <laughs> it's, it's, it's a slippery crazy. slope it's absurd <laughs> it is a slippery really slope steep. it's absurd <laughs> you know I mean I hey can though make money off of this I mean dude I know some people that are making like twenty five fifty G's a month a month I mean getting absolutely smashed in the videos but like twenty five fifty k. Sweated out OnlyFans live. Now. That's all That's you, bro. Right. That's all you. That's all you. <laughs> just, just take it out. Yo, that's and a, the that's fresh all you're getting. And the that's fresh you're getting. Too. Oh wait, I forgot we're on video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't edit the shit. I didn't even flex it. Oh, that's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I didn't even. We'll get it for the shit. thumbnail. You would have broken the camera lens. <laughs> we'll get it for the thumbnail. We'll, we'll just it. blur him out and just have oh his calves. That's, that's gonna be your thumbnail. It's just a calf. Just your calves right there. Everyone that's going to be listening to this podcast are like, oh, yes, I'm going to learn so much about camera work. Yeah. <laughs> nope. No. Nope. Only fans and calves. That's what you yeah. guys are getting today. I still regret, like, you know, go, I used to go to, you know, go to work out at a commercial gym. And every time I'd go, yo, bro, I'm like, what's up? What do you do? What do you mean? What do I, what do you do for your calves? I was like, uh, <laughs> nothing. And I think I felt bad. I'm like, that's just the way they are. The genetics. I should have been a dick and just been like, you know what I do? Like 5,000 of these 2,000. Nope. Been like, listen, if you just you buy, buy my you fit tee, if you buy my <laughs> fit tee, <laughs> I promise you it's, I it's a number you, I could sell you a scientifically proven to help your calves grow. If you put a waist trainer on, yeah. your calves are going to grow. <laughs> Matt Roy waist, waist trainer. <laughs> Little signature. It'd be perfect. Just some ankle weights. <laughs> Just some ankle weights. Yeah, we'll get we'll you get wear it. them above uh, at your knee level, <laughs> like right above your calves. That should be your new thing. You should go to all your photography sessions in ankle weights. <laughs> then they think they're like, "Oh, that's when we fucking that's does why. it. That's, that's how, how he does it. Does it. Yeah. Fifty pound weight vest on yeah. all yeah. the time. It's like holy shit." Oh my god, we could we could. I, I think we should make calf molds. You know how like they make like those like you know those oh like those god. like sex god. dolls. Like, you know, just make them figure your calves. Out. Yeah. Just like, so people can take my calves yep. home with them. Yep, oh, and man. also for for baking, for baking, baking calf molds. <laughs> 
calf cupcakes. This is, this is gone so not where I thought this was going to go today. This is what happens when we're all tired. Yep. And we're all together in person. Yeah, I, I know. Already, we haven't done one in a while. I dumped an entire coffee on myself <laughs> and my white shoes. So back to the photography. No. <laughs> um, I don't even want to talk about photography anymore. I mean, when you... Like, I'm done. When you first got here, you know, you and I were kind of talking about, you know, you kind of moving into bigger brand deals and, and working with that. And we don't have to name the brands. I, I don't, we don't necessarily have to get into that. But I just got my biggest job I've ever signed on for. Yeah, yeah. congratulations. No, I want to hear all the brands. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, see, everyone thinks that I'm, I'm, I'm the brand whore. He really, low-key, he is the yeah. one. You know, I just look like it. Um, how, how were you able to kind of make that transition? It's almost like what, what we talk about with our businesses, right? Is like scaling things, right? And kind of in the photography world, I would assume if you're not doing more shoots or having people work on you, it's, it's getting bigger gigs. So, you know, how, how have you been able to kind of introduce yourself into that next tier of photographers and, you know, kind of how has that been for you so far? I mean, the newest one that I've worked on was, it, this goes back to like shooting for free. Like I photographed um, this brother and sister. They're Boca kids, and they're now both professional skateboarders. Super I met cool. them years ago, and it just turns out she just got her first shoe and like a little like a clothing line, backpack, hat, like a little package deal uh, with Vans. And through that connection from a handful of years ago, they were able to be like, oh, like we have a local guy down in South Florida. I've photographed him before, and I think Vans had used something for like on a small scale of like one of the photos that I shot. So like my name was in there. It's just a matter of like, I got this one and they're like, Hey, by the way, like if we like what, what, you know, comes from this, this project, like we'll hopefully have more. Yeah. And then sure enough, we've got more. So. I'll tell you one thing <clears throat> off the bat we had in our last podcast was when you give at first, you always will get in return later. And I think that's one of the most important things that, that I think a lot of people, especially when they get to a certain point, or they get too full on themselves or high on their supplies that they forget that giving is important, especially when it's to the right people, of course. You know, you don't you don't want to also waste your time, just give out to everybody and yep. let yourself get taken advantage of. But when you do it for the right people, it comes back in a very positive way. And I think in this case it goes to show like the fact that you took your time, you gave back to this group of people and they got to where they are now at this level and they gave you an opportunity. And I think a lot of people forget that that's why you need to treat everybody correctly in the same the same way you want to be treated because you never know nope. who that person might be one day or who they might know one day 100%. even if they're starting at a certain point and even where you might think it might appear you might be more successful at, at right now but that person might be at another level god knows when yep. and they're gonna one day hit you up because they're gonna remember who you were for what you did for them and they're gonna help you out i'd like to think so i mean I can't say I went out with that intention that day, but there was a time where it was just, I was going out with friends and photographing. And at that point I was, people were like, oh, what do you love about this? And I'm like, I'm creating memories. Like, you know, not all my friends went pro skateboarding, pro wakeboarding, pro surfing, but like, I always thought it'd be kind of cool. Like, I don't have any photos from like, you know, I grew up playing football and I skied at a pretty fairly high level all through college. I don't have any any memories documentation of that so i always kind of like i kind of create these like my friends skateboarding I, I look at it as like now that I, i'm a dad i'm like man like if i had some like i have got some cool photos of me skateboarding i'm like hey that's your dad he wasn't always this like <laughs> old loser in your eyes like he was kind of cool back in the day so i always thought that it was kind of neat that i'm giving that to my friends um that they could 20 years 30 years from now and be like wow like this is pretty yeah. dope like i used to do some cool stuff even though now you're looking at me like i'm this old man like your dad was cool. Yep. Um, Especially so I, now in today's, you're gonna, I'm sure you've taken a lot of pictures of people where now when their grandparents are gonna be like, "This was my grandma and grandpa." <laughs> Holy shit! Damn, I was shredded. <laughs> or, there, or in my case, I'll be like, "Man, he did a great job with those edits." <laughs> <laughs> Man, your your photographer, he knew the the lighting. Oh my god, Grandpa Josh's feet look amazing back <laughs> <Yeah>. then. Wow. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> sidetracked. Here we go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Well, we're going back this <laughs> this funnel." <laughs> yeah, get a couple savages in a room together. It's it's nonstop. But you know, I th I think it is important that you know, especially when you're starting out. I mean, 
in the training world, it's the same thing, right? Like usually you have to give it a couple free sessions, let people get to know your name out, but it's understanding, you know, when and where to give out yep. the free services, right? Like you were helping your friends out and also kind of, you know, getting, uh, getting your feet wet. But a lot of times, especially down here in Miami, right? There's like a lot of quote unquote, like influencers, yeah, right? Models because you know, their friends take pictures or whatever. And you know, I, I, would imagine a lot of photographers can get kind of caught in that trap of like, okay, well, if I just fo photograph hot girls all day for, yeah. you know, I'm going to blow up one time and become a orangutan. It's like, I don't that's know not going to happen. I don't know many people that have gone that route and have become all that successful. Um, if that's the route you're going, like, I'm just going to post tits and ass on my Instagram. Like, cool. Good luck. Five years ago, maybe. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. But Things now, change yeah, now. Things have definitely yeah, people yeah. are people companies are probably getting like, annoyed. They, they understand. Companies yeah, too. People like, are getting well, annoyed. Companies have yeah, caught on as time. far as like your fake followers. Yeah. And I remember seeing guys with you know hundred thousand followers and thirty likes. Yeah. Zero comments. Yeah. Like, hmm. like I've got a smaller following, but it, I think uh, I'm just kind of over it to be honest. <laughs> but I don't look, think I, I've posted it. Like I, I love doing stories. And I like seeing beautiful photos and being inspired by other people's work. Um, I think now just the process, like I'm like, oh my God, I, I've got too many photos to pick from. I don't know what to pick. And this stresses me out. I'm like, yeah, I'm just not going to post anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is when I, you know, I get someone to actually like take care of that for me. But I, I like engaging on the platform and I've met cool people through there. And just, you know, I was in Colorado last month and somebody that was in Boulder saw that I was there like, Hey, you're here. Like, would you be down to help us with a photo shoot? And I was like, yeah. And these are two like badass endurance athletes. Not that they'll be listening to this, but, um, I was like sick. I get to shoot them like jumping off whatever, running through the mountains. And they're like, Oh yeah, we're pregnant. And we want to do like a, a, a maternity. <laughs> like, <laughs> announcement. And I was like, wah, wah. <laughs> can we do that but, while you're running through the mountains? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was at the base of the mountains in the background. There were bikes involved, but there was no riding of the bikes, Oh man! but it was, I mean, they're just cool people, but that wouldn't have happened without sure. this platform. Well, I'm going to so. tell you 100%. Like even with, I tell Josh all the time, like where I'm at today with all the stuff I do, I don't, I don't even know if I'd be here with, if it wasn't for these platforms, mm -hmm. you know, the same way you mentioned that. And I think most importantly is the fact that, you know, what's most important is, is the way you use these platforms and it's the way that you go about these platforms. And that's why going back to what you're saying, people are starting to realize what's bullshit and what's not. It's, yep. it's about the context of what you're delivering and, 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 you know, the co the quality of that delivery, you know, and what is the true messaging behind this and what are you it's actually the trying authenticity to give to people behind it? Exactly. You know? And I think that's one of the most important things is for anybody who's doing it either for themselves, for a business, uh, for influential work, you know, working with brands, like it's what, what is it that you're putting behind it? And it, is it really you? Is mm -hmm. it authentic? Is it, is it meaningful to you? I think also to another thing is too many people do things that they're just, completely completely um taking the fact out that this even aligns with them as a person mm -hmm. you know and they just jump in to do it because it looks cool or because it's going to pay them this insanely significant yeah. amount of money and i'm not saying hey there's nothing wrong like heck you know somebody pays you good money but i think also too you have to say does this completely not align with me oh i've, I've you know? i turn down stuff that i'm not 100 yeah. percent in line with or don't agree with or just like no this product's not that good i can't i can't back that like if i if i wouldn't use it myself like i'm i don't want it I'm okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, and I think it's so important to, to you know, have those non-negotiables and, and those boundaries that you set, you know, whether it be with your photography business, with what we do in health and wellness, you know, you don't have, like, even though it'd be nice to be able to help everyone, like, you know, you, I'm sure you started as a trainer to, to help, uh, you know, as many people as possible. That's what we did. I'm sure you want to do it with photography business, but it doesn't work like that, right? Like at a certain point, the, the person that you're working with or the brand that you're working with has to align, like like Anthony said, with those like underlying values that, that you have as a person and that you want your business to be with. Because at the end of the day, like your, your name's going to be on that forever. Yeah. And the brands we respect, I think the brands you do work mm -hmm. with respect you more for the fact that you've kept it such a tight niche that, you know, it shows people too like, hey, these are the brands that I believe in. These are the ones I stick with. But when you see people constantly rotating you know, and yeah. I'm not saying because there's look, there's brands that, yes, like, you know, they have little things. You can do different things, but there's always those core brands. Like you have those core brands. You know, let's say if you're repping like a Puma or this or a Nike or this or an Under Armour. Like, Is that a plug? No. Right? <laughs> so when you were constantly rotating through all of them all the time, it's like, wait, what? what is this? Per you know what I mean? And I'm not saying nothing's completely wrong, but I think also it just shows sometimes too, like, 
this person really doesn't have, really is not working with the thing that aligns with them the most, you know? And I think that it really shows when you see those, those uh, pages or those, you know, whatever you want to call them, social media influencers, you know, whatever you want to say, when you see that they've stuck with certain brands for a long time, it's really when you see the true value that they're driving for, for people, for the brand, for the company, the trust factor, you know, you see what they truly align with and it really speaks out. And that's, those are the ones that usually do the yeah. best. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I've been involved with Lululemon for like six years now. And so I, they set the standards so high that, you know, if somebody else comes along, I'm just like, eh, no, nah, I'm good. This is, it's, like they get, they, they, I'm not gonna say they ruined it for everybody else, but like, you know, the, the culture, the community, the, a, the product is amazing. And I was fortunate enough to do a lot of work with them. So Josh, if we start on apparel line, we're screwed. Yeah, <clears throat> pretty much. I mean, if you want to give me free clothes, <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I just don't want hand me downs. Okay. So if we're going to be working with hand me downs, hey, only the high you take are they're brand new, <laughs> <laughs> only high end fashion. Okay. We're upper, esch- we're upper echelon with the sweated out podcast. Although if you got that hookup for ten thousands, I mean that's a yeah between Puma and ten thousand. If we can't figure something <laughs> hey. out, you guys listening? I'm just throwing hey. that out there. You guys listening? We're paying attention. We're fr- yeah. we're trying to figure it out. You guys help us out. What is it? You know, like I mean, you've worked with I, I can imagine thousands of different brands on different shoots. Like, are there key characteristics that brands are looking for with? You know, I hate using this word, but influencers. You know, um, I don't really I. I've done a, it's funny, I've done a handful of shoots in the last couple of months that have been, instead of models, they're influencers. Um, I don't have any say in who they pick um, because of their, they're their athletes. Uh, I've been fortunate enough, like the people that I have worked with are super cool. Um, and I hate to keep, uh, go back to Lululemon, but a lot of the, like, the, everyone's like, oh, how do I become a model? And I thought it was really rad that they use majority of their ambassadors are a yeah. lot of their, well, quote unquote models, their, their athletes. He shot Brian um, Mazza not too long ago. Right? Well, oh, that's, that's yeah. With vital yeah. protein. I mean, dropping, uh, dropping some names there. there that's go. all right. Um, we've been trying to get, him, we've been trying yeah. to figure it he, out. Get him was, on the podcast. Uh, I met him. It's f- funny going back four, five, four years plus ago, I met him through Lululemon and I uh, went up to New York city when they opened the flat iron store and they had a bunch of parties that weekend. And I met him and a couple other guys, super nice guy. And uh, deceivingly, extremely fast. Holy shit. And he's like, I'm going to sprint. I'm like, okay, cool. And I was like, <laughs> like he's already by me. So I got like up. two frames off. I was like, whoa, I did not see that coming. <laughs> like, right, chill, I know he's yeah. chill, he does run a lot. So Dude. I know he's he does run a lot and he trains a and lot. And he was one of those guys like, you want me to jump over this? You want me to do that? And just like, he just want, like, he was cool. Like, as far as like, you want someone to be your brand ambassador, like he was the man. Like he was great in front of the camera and he wasn't like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta run again. Like it would have been like Josh. We hired. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Matt, you get one time. We're going to yeah, do, we're gonna one, do one set. Deal. We're going to do one set. That's we're going to roll with it. That's it. We're gonna roll. But Hey, they come out great. You know? And I, I think, I think one of the things that I really enjoy about your photography is that, you know, it's not overly edited, you know, it's, it's, I, ch- I mean, I want to, and I don't, I don't mean to say that in the stop. I'm going to stop, stop you for a sec. I'm going to stop you for a sec. When you see the photography, it's it's Matt Roy. That's what it is. I, it's cool when now that I get it, people that like, you know I knew that was, like I didn't need yeah. to see your name. I knew that was yours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, that style is. I keep going like, once again. That was a that was a product of working with Lululemon for so long because it was they wanted in the moment authentic real photos, not staged, not even perfect. Like if you're holding that yoga pose, like we want the transition from one to the other. It doesn't need to be like the perfect held spot. It's like, like I always go back. It's, it's, uh, it's like the flick of the wrist. Like for me, like in, in the yoga, like I'm looking at the wrist and like how the fingers move like that to me. It's like, we'll go back to, uh, styles, uh, coming from like the skateboarding and wakeboarding where like everything was about or skiing was style, like making it look effortless. Uh, that's style. And so I tried to incorporate some of that into my fitness photography, like incorporate, like that's someone's style and how they move. Mm. Um, not everyone has it, 
But when you like, I've photographed a handful of people that just like that person has it. Yeah. Like and with just the way they move and they flow. And I appreciate that. Thank like, you so much. For the compliment. <laughs> Thank you so draw. much for the compliment. I, I accept that wholeheartedly yeah, you should, so you much. You should definitely see clunky. the way that Josh's toes move in those yeah. pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. When he flicks the water. Flicks just like it. one solid block. Just, <laughs> <laughs> so just nuts. like a hoove. So not so. <laughs> Not graceful in yeah, the slightest no. bit. No. You just want to make sure that he doesn't tag you right on yeah. the yeah. bottom of his foot on that picture. I just send, I'm like, hey, Matt, I'm going to post this. Do you want me to tag you or not? Or no? I'm just leaving it good. I'm just leaving it Nobody off. needs to know. But but there is, like, there is something, you know, to, to say about, you know, how the quality of a photo comes out when you have, you know, someone who is proficient in movement though. Oh yeah. You know, like it's night and day. Like shooting a runner that doesn't know how to run doesn't look good. Yep. You're like, Oh, you're dragging your feet. Uh." Yeah. (laughs) And that's it. That's a, I mean, you can give him subtle cues to kind of help, but it's like, take me and you want to photograph me running. Like it's not going to look good no matter how good my form. I'm just not built to be a runner. Yeah. So what you're meant to. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Because I think we can all agree that through the time, especially with social media, a lot of content being pumped out, we see a lot of similarities, a lot of repetition of the same similar content. What are you seeing different with the way things are being captured and um, the way things are being posted? What would you say is that main thing that you see that's that's a new trend that we're sticking out now in the content world and for yourself? Um, this goes for the content world, not for myself because I haven't done it yet. I'm just not a video fan i've been in like my buddies have been doing reels like uh, for Mm. some reason like the reels are hot right now super creative people and that's this to go back a little bit during covid i think you had a lot of these guys that were super creative that were working for agencies or other like big production that might have lost their job um so you're starting to see them like you know i'm bored whether it's creating music or video and now you've got these super talented guys that my, maybe you're out of work that you would have never seen their stuff before, but now because you know they got laid yeah. off or whatnot, that they're pumping out some insanely creative stuff. And it's yeah, there's true. there's one guy who works with uh, you know Jordan Syatt. You know he used to be yeah. Gary Vee's trainer. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he he is the uh, the videographer for Jordan, and he's been posting like a ton of different like tutorials, how to do different transitions, like slow mo, all that stuff, and. You know, I've been picking up on a lot of that yeah. stuff, trying to get it well, going. I think that's the other thing, too, is you're seeing a lot of people going to the online teaching aspect. Um, there's a couple of guys that I follow. It's like all of a sudden, like, oh, now we're launching this new program, and it's all for uh, car, you know, uh, this guy, Aaron Brimhall. Super talented, but it's like anything car-related, photo, video, and gotcha. putting out, like, it's a workshop. I don't, I don't know if, how many days or whatever it is, but, you know, you're getting these guys that are, you know, putting, like, there's a guy by the name of Chase Jarvis that I, he kind of like, will say like he disrupted the industry 10 plus years ago where he was, you know, big time commercial photographer who started doing video blogs, vlogs about like behind the scenes. And at that time that was like taboo to tell any, like to show like what was actually right. going on. Like, well, if I give you these secrets, you're going to use them and then maybe up me. Like his thought was like, great. Like, let's step everybody's yeah. game up. And uh, I, I love that idea. There's one guy who works with gymnasts. I've been seeing him a lot on Facebook with, like, these 10-minute photo challenges and stuff. I can't remember. Oh, this is going to blow my mind. I can't remember his name. But he, he his style reminds me a lot of yours. Oh, like, cool. You know, super faded in the background with, you know, uh, a strong picture in the front. And, and doesn't really seem, you know, like there's been, a, a you know, an over yeah. amount of, of unnecessary edits. I like, yeah, I just, I'd like it to look real. Yeah. Like, it, like what it looked like if, in and that it, moment. It feels better, like, as, as you know, the, the subject, right? Like, knowing that you weren't fucking hideous enough where, like, I had you had to put, you know, five hours worth of Photoshop. Uh, well, don't Photoshop get me wrong. In. There's a place and a time for that. I mean, in the commercial world with the composites, you take ten photos and you layer them in. You take the athlete, you know, a photo of a stadium, and he's kicking a soccer ball, which never even happened. Like, I'm just, I can appreciate the work and how it looks. It's just. Yeah, not, not my you. not my thing. So so when are we gonna see a Matt Roy online program drop? Uh, I'm not talking about the calves. I'm talking about the photo <laughs> program. Yeah, how to build your calves on a one entry level? I've had a few people reach out to me and ask me about teaching, doing like workshops for, you know, sports 
perform or sports photography and uh, kind of like how to put that stuff together. Um, and I probably should use my free time to do that versus like ride. I got, I got a stat the other day that I was like, oh, maybe I should cut down a little bit. But it was like you reached your annual goal of 10,000 miles and it's been 499 plus hours on the bike. And I'm like, yeah, for, for those listening to the podcast, that's a lot. of hours. For those listening to the podcast, by the way, probably don't who might not know you. Right. Like you're actually a. a High level competitive cycle. Uh, I mean, don't it, don't it, sell yourself short though. But you've po- you've you've yeah, made podium a couple yeah, of times I, in I, some pretty I, big races. I've raced a, f- a few races and done fairly well for a non endurance kind of guy. Um, but also looking back, like oh, it's, it is a lot of time. But I guess if you added up the time you spent in the gym, I'm sure it's hundreds for and sure. hundreds of well, hours. And if you love it, out, you know, right? if you love yeah. it, fuck it, you know. Yeah. It's really but, um, no, I I think that that could be a great evolution. Um, I, I'm not the best as far as like, all right, we need to sit down and hash this out. Like if I had a partner or someone to kind of like, maybe who's done it before to kind of guide me along, um, I would probably, that would probably happen sooner than later. Um, but I definitely have had people reach out to be like, Hey, let's do a photo workshop. I definitely think you should, man. You know? Yeah. I think it'd be an amazing idea. We'll have to talk after this. Oh yeah. yeah. We got you. I've got a model. Perfect. I'm, I'm going to have to stop eating Josh. I'm going to have to get rid of all this fucking yeah, candy menace keeps bringing in here. Oh, and you didn't even give me any? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we got a whole, we do. We have so much. We have so, we'll give you I'm good. Okay. We'll give Jenny you doesn't want things at the house. <laughs> Bro, I know a hundred, I know every time she's dogging menace. Yeah, he, he hit me up. He brought in a half eaten package of Oreos. Well, he hit me up before we got this studio and he's like, oh, you know, man, like, you know, I think we, I, you know, instead of getting that, instead of getting the studio that, that we're going to get, I think we need to get a warehouse. And I was like, bro. You just told me two days ago that you got like fucking a thousand pounds worth of kettlebells in, and now you need a place to store them because she's yelling at you. Like, no, we're not getting a goddamn fucking warehouse so you, you can store all your kettlebells. Are you selling kettlebells now? No, I'm not selling no, kettlebells. No, you just got a bunch of them. <laughs> I'm not well, selling like kettlebells. All, dude, all the, I know somebody who's selling I mean, kettlebells. No offense, yeah. it doesn't look like you're using them, though. <laughs> oh. oh. Wow. That was a little low blow. <laughs> It's just a beard. It makes him. It is the beard. It makes him look beard. Different. It's like Samson. You know when you cut his hair off <laughs> and he loses his strength. That's it. That's but dude, happened. like all these, all these football. I mean, he probably has. I don't know what a hundred of them. Oh. He was like, "Oh, I'm going to bring in more." I'm like, "You're not bringing in any more. We're not bringing in any more." Like, <laughs> oh, but like, what about? Oh, we can bring in the footballs. I'm like, "No more, no, no more, no more." You're going to trigger me like a motherfucker from my 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 time in athletics. To I'm just going to the next one. I'm going to be a big bucket of foot rub. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just what, lotion. Well, you notice foot like on the lotion. on the table, it's like Mendez's side and then my side. So I have like all the <laughs> cereal guys, and he's got all the sports <laughs> stuff. Look, I got a little camera here for Matt. I saw that. I didn't See? know. If that was out for See, me. Or I'm just, always thoughtful, but Josh isn't. I just play. He, got me, co- he got me coffee. <laughs> he did. Well, I, I pointed you. it out. Oh, to you. Pointed out, and then I spilled. I it. Who got you water? You did. I kept yeah. you hydrated. I made, I made you though. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> always yeah, making you. people do stuff. Like just snap my fingers. Oh, yeah. Like a back. <laughs> Pause between the two. He's like, hold up, hold up. Yeah, we got a love hate relationship going on. I'm actually out of water, by the way. Already, <laughs> fuck, man. Yeah. Somebody. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, we're, yeah, I guess it's probably a good time to wrap it up. I mean, you know, I want to. Yeah, I could do this all day. I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we could talk about talk your calves shit. all day. <laughs> uh, for those of you, you Cam- guys can, we'll include the swipe up link to Matt's <laughs> calves <laughs> only fans. So, guys, what you learned today is <sighs> beard, camera, calves, calves, and feet. Yeah, yep. that's all you need. That's all you need to get six figures. <laughs> <laughs> six oh, figure payout. <laughs> On the I serious won't. note. Before we wrap things up, what would you like to see shifting in in the content and uh, photography space? What would you like to see more of? And what would you like to see, I guess, um, how would I put it, become that next evolution? Um, what I'd like to see is more, I mean, I try to read through the bullshit of what I see out there. Like more realness, more, like, more authenticity, like just... I don't know. I, I did this. I'm not going to mention any names. I did a photo shoot the other week and then that person posted one of the photos and I was like, that looks different. And so I pulled up the photo that I shot and then I pulled up the photo of that she posted. The edited I it. was like, she's three inches taller. Her waist is two inches smaller. I'm like, and this is a beautiful girl. Like why? why? Like I, and if so, like, I don't know that, that I'd like to see less of that. Like so just the, 
pu- like, and I have a ten year old daughter. Like sh- those standards are so. Of course, I mean, th- I, it's hard enough as it is. So I'd like, I would say, I'd, I'd love to see this shift away. More. And I know there's girls like this is me like photoshopped and this is me not photoshopped and like why do you need to? Do you get that a lot? Do you get a lot of people come back to me like Matt? I really need you to photo like I want to look slimmer. You I want to look. I r- only me. Rarely. Only Josh. <laughs> Could you make my pecs bigger? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> need more bulbous more shoulders. More bulge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I that that I guess you know it didn't even cross my mind up until now, but it's yeah that I'd like to see less of that. And I, I guess I guess I give people the benefit of the doubt, but bef- th- I like to think that it's not manipulated. But the more I see, the more I'm like, that's definitely like she did not look like that when I photographed her. Well, and I th- I think you know that kind of falls along the same lines of the people that are like, oh well, you know, a lot of people have been asking me about X routine. It's like you know, probably they're not. <laughs> you know, probably they're not. I'd like to see those DMs. You know, they ask yeah. whereas like <laughs> I'll, specific I'll I'll get on a story. And I'll be like, well, one person asked me. Like, yeah. uh, well, just be honest. Like, you whether you have a thousand followers or you're someone like Anthony who's got you know over two hundred thousand. Like, all of those people still matter. It doesn't you know like whether one person actually asks you a question or fifteen people. Like, if one person is asking you something, there's probably a majority of people who are just afraid to ask you. You, know, you, you don't need to hide behind yeah. the fact that a lot of people are no. quote unquote asking you about a subject. Like just say one person asked me, I want to take care of that. Yeah. And that one person who actually did ask you probably will uh, appreciate. And then there's going to be 10 people that slide in and be like, yo, I, you know, right. I actually had that same question, but yeah, I didn't right. want to compare, ask, compared like, to oh. what would happen if you were like, well, a lot of people have been asking me lately. It's like, I can tell right away. That's a lie. You know, like no one, but uh, on the other side, like I don't really follow those accounts. I had to scrub my page. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, we live in a fucking weird time, man. A hundred percent. It's weird time. And I haven't even, like, I just recently, within the last month, turned my notifications off on Instagram. Like, it's I've, fantastic. I've had that shit off for, I don't know well, how long. I talked to, <laughs> talk to a ton of other people. I would, like, I've shit. never had I'm one of those people, I'm one of those people that has to Is have them on. that why you never respond to me? Uh, me? <laughs> I'm one of those people that has to have them have them on because if I don't know that Instagram's on my phone, I won't. But Matt, I, won't go but to Matt, it. I tag you in my photos. Yes, you the do. Once you I take of mine. That. Oh, so you started tagging him and stopped tagging me? What the <laughs> fuck, dude? I need the followers. <laughs> fuck him. Yeah, but then, but then they don't go to him. <laughs> like, who's this guy? Yeah, yeah. Oh, me? Yeah, they're like, who's this smuck? <laughs> How'd this why, guy get on? Yeah, this why are you tagging him? He's a joke. <laughs> Uh, you it's know, just funny how that all that stuff works, and I try not to overanalyze it or get too wrapped up in it. I, I mean, I spend a lot of time, like I like I said, I, li- I like to just see beautiful photos, yeah, and being sp- and be inspired by other people. Uh, I don't technically follow a lot of those, like we'll say, fitness accounts, um, where it's like, yeah, get sign up and get my program, like just not what I'm following. Um, but not to say that it's not beneficial. I just it's not, you know. So being manipulation. being a creator <laughs> that you are, w- what are some of the uh, other platforms that you see that are, are probably great platforms for your style of work or that you would like to see being implemented more of? I mean, me personally, like I, as much as it scares me, I'd love to do more podcasts, more video stuff. Um, I don't mind talking uh, as long as I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and But I know my daughter is massively into YouTube. And I think I just, I'm like, oh, I miss that boat. Like to start now, nah. like I think you should do it. Nah. I think yeah. I think I think ever, if there's man. one platform, I mean, other than maybe yeah. podcasting, that you should definitely get into. It's YouTube. YouTube. It's you, yeah. You should, man. It you can monetize the shit yeah. out of it. The hard part is, is like, I if I'm working, like I can't, I I don't even, I won't go on my phone if I'm working. So like, or like I I'll leave a shoot. Like I didn't get one behind the scenes photo. Sounds like you just so, need to put your daughter well, to work. She's almost at that. Yeah, she can hold the phone. You know, it's funny. She actually she probably so, be really good at it. When I did, uh, I had to do my own, like, because I was an ambassador at the Lincoln Road Lou Lemon store, and I had somebody photograph my photos, and there was one that I wanted to get that I just didn't have somebody to shoot it. I put my camera on a tripod, and I set up everything, and I had her in. She was five, and I was like, push the button. Like, I, I set everything up, and she's on the floor laying with the tripod and just, like, clicking That's away. Awesome. So she technically shot one of my photos. I mean, dude, I had one of my clients. I mean, you know her. I had her daughter teach me how to use TikTok the other day. It was like, You're, oh, your daughter loves TikTok? Perfect. I have no fucking clue how to use it. You need it. So That's I went up funny. into their apartment after a session. I was like, 
their uh, their ten year old daughter. I was like, can you? But you see, but you can see you teach crazy? me how to TikTok? The fact, see, this is why, dude, you gotta get into video because you're seeing that more platforms are starting to shift. Even TikTok, I getting, lose, so I there's lose, no pictures on TikTok. I lose jobs because of I don't do video, and I I don't want to do video. I'll be honest. I don't want to buy twenty thousand dollars of more equipment, new computers, more hard drives. Um, I I still think I'm trying to figure out the photography thing. Yeah, and and I it, I just I've seen people try to do both. I just I think one suffers. Gotcha. Um, and that's just my take. And I want to do jobs where I'm not trying to, like, if you want photos, like I'll shoot the photos. And you want video, like I'll hire, a, I'll bring on a buddy, I'll hire sure. a friend. Let's let's create a team. That's we did that last week. Um, with one of my friends who's just super talented and like he does video and I shoot the photos. Um, and that works well. I think trying to switch back and forth. If you're, if you're really trying to do it right, I think you need a dedicated person on each one, unless you do like one day you have me do stills and one day you have me do video, but then the budget just doubled. Makes um, sense. And Makes a lot sense. of people, you know, can't, a can't afford that. But going back to like the media platform, he was shooting on, you know, a, a red camera, like super high end, and it was framed Need up for a nine by nine by six thirty thousand dollar camera. Yeah, thirty thousand dollar camera to shoot vertical. Matt, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So yeah, this whole the whole thing we did when you when we kicked you out of the track was that was being shot for social. So it was. I I always ask like, where is this being? Where is this going to end up? Is it is it website? Because maybe it's a big you know banner landscape. Oh, it's going to be social. You want to fill the frame, the fill the phone, vertical. Okay, cool. We got to shoot you know portrait mode. Um, so I think those things become crucial as far as like asking what a client. Gotcha. And so this was like the goal was shoot for social first, and then anything else after is a bonus. So do you see that happening more now? Where Way more. Okay, that's Way what I was going to ask you. Where and I and I do I do believe that you know even with the website like websites you know obviously unless they're 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 phone friendly websites but even then like websites a lot of them aren't even phone friendly. I had this conversation with um, we were riding bikes and I ran into a friend of mine who has a like a cycling clothing brand, and she was saying. Um, that yeah, like seventy, I think seventy percent of her sales come from people on their phones. Like it's it's you know so you get me think like the the website has to be mo like now it's more like mobile friendly versus I mean granted I can't remember I think the last few purchases even through like Amazon have all been on my phone like I haven't done it on the regular computer. Yeah, I agree. You know, and then again, or if I see something on Instagram, it's like oh cool, click the link. Yep. And, um, now we're. You know? And then again, people are also creating content on their phone. Yeah. You know? Well, that's why, I mean, I'm on old, like, people always ask me, like, ah, oh, how'd you film that? I'm like, with my phone. <laughs> I've got a secret, and then I'll tell you if you guys subscribe. See, no, you're I'm doing video. I do it on my phone. <laughs> I do it on my phone, and the, and the trick is. The CIG Reels and TikTok. The trick is two times zoom on your video. Boom. Interesting. Two times zoom on your video. Gives you a little bit of, if you're close enough to the subject, it gives you a little bit of depth of field, kind of like a. Like a port, like in portrait mode. So the things in the background a little blurred out. Things are closer, a little bit more in focus, um, and it just has a different look than if you did that super wide angle, like regular, like filming something. So that's something I've learned, you know, just with my phone. But I want the twelve. I want the iPhone twelve. Just I think we all do. It's an yeah. excuse well, to I, create I, more. I'm content. just waiting for Mendes to make more money and buy me it. Come on, me. Daddy. No, I, I think that tip is going to help Josh's OnlyFans big time. Maybe, maybe I need to start one. Well, then you get a little closer. You zoom in. All right, let's. Wiggle, wiggle I'm gonna yeah, let's, 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 test, let's test out this. Let's theory. end this before we we get too far. I gotta pee anyway. You made me chug all that water. Now I gotta go to the bathroom. Well, hopefully uh, refill. Yeah. Refill. <laughs> Where can people find you? Um, basically Instagram Matt underscore Roy. Um, there's a lot of Matt Roy's. Unfortunately, I couldn't get an actual name. I get I do get tagged on a lot of other people's stuff. I'm like, please remove me. That's a <laughs> horrible photo. Just remove it. And if you and if I do shoot with you and you get photos and then you edit them on your own <laughs> to make them look much worse, in my opinion, don't tag me. Don't tag <laughs> I'll, untag, I'll untag myself. Don't, oh, tag don't you worry. So you good. put a pink filter over that. I'm like, what? Is, why? Why? Oh. Uh, and then website Matt Roy Photography. There we go. Awesome. All right. So la cool. Last question. What's the biggest piece of advice you can leave off to all our, all our listeners today? Um, we'll go with just like a photography thing. It's just a ma keep shooting, shoot everything. Um, it's, it sounds cliche, whatever. It, that's what I did. And that's how you get better and shoot. 
things that you think you like and things that you might not like. I've shot architecture. Oh, I don't like that. Check that off the list. Me I, doesn't I, like that. No, I've, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, it's like, like, you know, carving out your, carving out your niche, right? There. It's like find things, you know, I found things I didn't like and I found things I really liked and the things that I really liked, I put all my time and effort and energy into creating yeah. that. And I don't know if, if Gary V is one of those guys that said like, find your strength and just exploit it. I don't know Didn't. if that, that is his, um, but I found my strength and I'm trying to exploit it. So, but I, it was years of, like I said, I shot architecture. I did kids portraits, like shoot me now, please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like things. Uh, and, well, I, going wait, back, I was gonna like, ask you to I shoot baby f- Stella's. I, uh, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it, like Jimbery. Maybe get it, some of those action yeah, shots. Yeah, it, yeah. It's funny because other people I've had in my life are like, "Oh, but that's money." I'm like, "That that's not driving me." Yeah. Like, I, if I'm miserable doing it, I don't care. How, well, maybe you could pay me enough. I'm sure, but um, it you know. It just maybe not after the Cavs OnlyFans, but yeah. yeah. Well, once that money starts rolling in, we <laughs> don't have to worry about it. Photography is done. Photography is too. done. Just yeah. oil rubbing. He's your gonna calves. get people shooting his calves. <laughs> I'll be I'll hire you guys. <laughs> yeah, we perfect. can do the video production. <laughs> perfect. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I shot everything and found out what I liked, what I didn't like, and like I said, just went all in on that one thing, and I, I think it. It treated me well. Well, guys, you awesome. heard it. Appreciate shoot, you, man. Shoot and shoot. Oh, thank you. Appreciate Thanks for coming it. in. Until next time, guys. guys.